Today I'm going to break down the best time to use your spotlight keys in August, September, and October. Let's go ahead and dive on into it, shall we? Our first spotlight cache running from August 6th through August 13th contains Marvel Boy as a new Series 5 card, Red Hulk as a returning Series 5 card, and Blob as a returning Series 5 card. This week gets a fairly middle of the road 3 out of 5 stars for me. In my opinion, Marvel Boy is the big draw here. I expect him to be a unique and powerful effect in Kazar Swarm decks moving forward. So if that's an archetype you enjoy, I think that's the big draw to opening this week. Red Hulk and Blob are both Series 5 cards. They're both reasonably playable, but I don't think they're crucial make or break cards in any decks that feature them, meaning if they're missing from your collection, you can usually substitute them out for something else that's big in 6 energy like Magneto and go on your merry way playing whatever deck that might want them. Our next cache runs from August 13th through August 20th and contains Wiccan as a new Series 5 card, Pixie as a returning Series 5 card, and Loki as a returning Series 5 card. This week gets a fairly solid 4 out of 5 stars for me. Wiccan seems like he could potentially be a powerful effect, and he'll definitely be a build around, meaning that your deck will be making lots of choices to try and optimize him so he won't be substitutable inside of it. Pixie isn't headlining any top meta decks right now, but similar to Wiccan, she's a card that you construct your deck around with very specific choices, making her not replaceable, and she's appeared in top meta decks in the past, and I think definitely has potential to do so again in the future. She's also a fun, unique effect that I think is an excellent pickup. Finally, Loki is no longer a build-around card after his recent redesign. He's more akin to something of a tech card, and we're still kind of getting a feel for what he's going to be like, but I don't really expect him to be a must-have card overall, with his current earliest potential looking as an Arishim card as far as playability goes. Running from August 20th through the 27th, we have Speed as a new Series 5 card, Iron Lad as a returning Series 5 card, and Jeff the Baby Land Shark as a returning Series 5 card. This Spotlight Cash Week gets a solid 4 out of 5 star rating from me as well. Both of the returning cards this week, Iron Lad and Jeff, regularly see play in powerful Marvel Snap decks, and I expect that to continue into the future. If there are things that are missing from your collection, they're excellent cards to be filling out. The newest release in Spotlight, Speed, I think, won't be a meta-dominating must-have card, but I also expect it to be fairly playable. On average, he's probably going to be a 3-6 or 3-7 without you working too hard for it, which is a really solid rate for a card that effectively has no downside. Our last spotlight cash for the August season runs from the 27th through September 3rd. It contains Emperor Hulkling as a new Series 5 card, Cannonball as a returning Series 5 card, and Nimrod as a returning Series 4 card. This Spotlight Cache is going to be the worst one I review in this video, getting just 1 out of 5 stars. I think Emperor Hulkling has a realistic chance to be one of the weaker card releases in the upcoming months. Cannonball has not been a format staple since Professor X was redesigned, and Nimrod sees play in some fringe decks like Galactus or Phoenix Force, but it's also a Series 4 card, meaning if it's missing from your collection, you can pick it up for 3,000 tokens outside of the spotlight cash system. As a small note, as we head on into the September and October seasons to review the caches, these are data mined informations, meaning unlike August, they have not been confirmed yet by second dinner. That being said, August didn't have any changes from the previous data mines, and I wouldn't be surprised if these don't either. Let's go ahead and take a look. The first cache of the September season, running from the 3rd through the 10th, contained Silver Sable as a new Series 5 card. U.S. Agent as a returning Series 5 card, and Mockingbird as a returning Series 5 card. This Spotlight Cash Week gets a perfect 5 out of 5 stars from me. Mockingbird is an incredibly powerful Marvel Snap card, who even after her adjustment to being 6 energy is still seeing play in a variety of competitive and 
good decks. U.S. Agent doesn't see nearly as much play, but I also think that is in part due to the fact that it's not in a lot of players' collections. This card was buffed to giving things minus four after it rotated out of its initial spotlight cash and has not been rerun since. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a marked uptick in this card seeing regular play once more people have access to it since I think it's a fairly powerful effect. Finally, our new card to release this week, Silver Sable, I think is going to be a likely bounce format staple and also see play in other spots as her effect reads is quite potent. Our next cash running from September 10th through the 17th contains Madam Webb as a new Series 5 card, Eliath as a returning Series 5 card, and Silk as a returning Series 4 card. This Spotlight Cash gets a fairly weak 2 out of 5 star rating from me, with the primary appeal being the new card release in Madam Web, in my opinion. I expect she'll be a must-have card for move enjoyers moving forward forward the returning cards this week leave a little bit to be desired silk is only series four so if you're missing her you can pick her up for 3,000 collectors tokens and Eliath, while it sees play in some things like super giant control or even some hope ramp decks that's pretty niche as a whole and definitely not top meta contenders Running from the 17th through the 24th of September, we have Arana as a new Series 5 card, Sage as a returning Series 5 card, and Miss Marvel as a returning Series 5 card. This week gets a solid 4 out of 5 stars for me. Arana, similar to Madam Web the previous week, is going to be a uniquely powerful move enabler, in my opinion, and the fact that she gets to leverage the upcoming activate ability really adds to her strength, letting you kind of be more flexible in the order you draw your movement enablers and payoffs. Sage is easily one of the best 3 energy stat sticks in the game, both acting as a good on-rate card that can play out in the last turn of the game, but also serving as a key enabler inside of combo decks that often feature things like Wong and Mr. Negative. Miss Marvel is the only thing that keeps the spotlight cash away from getting a perfect 5 out of 5 stars. While she is a series 5 card, her power level just isn't quite what it used to be, and she's not contained in any top meta decks and hasn't been for a little bit. Our last cash week in the September season, running from the 24th through October 1st, contains Scarlet Spider as a new series 5 card. White Widow as a returning Series 5 card, and Scar as a returning Series 5 card. I'm going to give the Spotlight Cash Week a solid 4 out of 5 star rating. White Widow in particular is the biggest draw here, being a must-have for clutter enjoyers, while also being a generically good 2 energy card that enables things like Werewolf by Night. Scar, in my opinion, is a little bit underrated overall, being a powerful build around payoff that you can enable in a few different ways. Our new card to release this week in Scarlet Spider is also likely to be fairly playable as well, having some synergy energies as well as just being a generic stat stick giving you 10 points for four energy spread across the board a little bit. Our first cash in the October season runs from the 1st through the 8th. It contains Scream as a new Series 5 card, Man-Thing as a returning Series 4 card, and Mobius and Mobius as a returning Series 4 card. The Spotlight Cash gets a fairly poor 2 out of 5 stars for me, with the primary appeal being the new card release in Scream. While she is obviously a tech card against opposing move decks, then she'll also be a card that you can enable on your own by pushing your opponent's stuff around the board. Both the returning cards this week leave a bit to be desired, with Man-Thing not being particularly playable and also being Series 4, and Mobius being an on-again, off-again reasonable tech card, depending on what the metagame looks like, but again, is Series 4. Four, so you can easily pick him up for collector's tokens if he's missing in your collection. Our next cash in October, running from the 8th through the 15th, contains Misery as a new Series 5 card, Nomura as a returning Series 5 card, and War Machine as a returning Series 5 card. I'm going to give the Spotlight Cash Week a fairly strong 4 out of 5 star rating. Nomura, in my opinion, is the most powerful card in Marvel staff that a lot of people just don't have access to. I think a lot of content creators undershot her power level on release week, and various archetypes playing her have consistently been putting up really strong metrics with really small sample sizes on untapped since then. I think those decks are likely to explode in popularity once more people get their hands on her and get to experience how strong this card is. 
Our new card released this week, Misery, is one that really feels like it can go either way, but there's a lot of combo potential, getting to play essentially two Odin effects in an on reveal deck. And finally, War Machine hasn't done anything noteworthy since it released, really, but I also wouldn't be surprised to see this card eventually get a rework because of that fact. Running from October 15th through the 22nd, we have Scorn as a new Series 5 card, Sebastian Shaw as a returning Series 5 card, and Gene Gray as a returning Series 4 card. The Spotlight Cash gets a middle of the road 3 out of 5 star rating from me. Sebastian Shaw is a must have card for Silver Surfer and more recently Gwenpool Enjoyers, but doesn't really have applications outside of those two spots. Scorn, as our new Series 5 card, seems like she has potential inside of the discard archetype, but it will remain to be seen if that deck has room to fit in another payoff like this. Finally, Jean Grey is definitely the weak link in this cycle, being only Series 4, and a card that has been bad more often than she's been good, in large part due to Kitty Pride being an ever-present part of the Marvel Snap metagame. Running from October 22nd through the 29th, we have Toxin as a new Series 5 card, Elsa as a returning Series 5 card, and Zabu as a returning Series 4 card. As an incredibly biased bounce enjoyer, I have to give this week a record 10 out of 5 stars based on Toxin alone being a third bounce enabler being added to the game as a more realistic less biased content creator trying to help you make good decision this week's probably deserves like a two to three stars overall with the wiggle room here being that this cash is still three months out at this point as the recording of this video and i would not be surprised if we see zabu get reworked again before it releases specifically when second dinner effectively gutted the cat making it an on reveal they said it would be a temporary effectively unplayableness for the card and they would revisit it in the future there's also specifically after our activate season so i wouldn't be surprised to see zabu get reworked to have an activate ability that you toggle at a later turn in the game for a one-shot effect finally elsa bloodstone is a series five card but she really doesn't see play in any meta power houses definitely not a must-have card by any means so the primary draw this week is definitely toxin who is certainly a must-have card if you enjoy picking your cards back up and playing them back out again our last spotlight cash week we'll be looking at in today's video runs from october 29th through november 5th it contains anti-venom as a new series 5 card supergiant as a returning series 5 card and ghost spider as a returning series 4 card the Spotlight Cash gets a middle of the road 3 out of 5 stars for me. The new card this week feels like it has some massive blowout slash combo potential. Supergiant is a solid returning Series 5 card that's seen fringe play in some control decks that I've enjoyed in the past, but Ghost Spider is really a weak link this time around. Not only is she Series 4 at this point, but this is going to be after all of those fancy new move enablers come out in the September season, so I honestly wouldn't be surprised if Ghost Spider gets pushed out of some of her own best decks. Well, we're done reviewing Spotlight Caches for today. I think it's also worth calling out in these roundups what is notably absent from these caches, i.e. higher series cards that you're not going to be able to turn your keys into over the next few months, meaning they're excellent pickups with your collector's tokens, in my opinion. We kick off these excellent collector's token pickup with Series 5 card Nico Minaru. Just unironically, I think she's one of the best, most interesting, flexible, and fun cards in Marvel Staff. She slots into a variety of decks, everything from Bounce and Destroy to lots of off-meta things that I build. If she's not in your collection, make her your priority pickup. Nocturne is number two on my top token pickups recommendation. She is easily the card to release in 2024 that i have played in the most decks this year she's just a generically good marvel snap card that helps you mitigate location variance she does occasionally bite you with her random element but she definitely does far more good than bad and you can play her in most any deck and be happy with the results she's going to be getting you most of the time 
My third and final top tokens pickup recommendation is Darkhawk, who is a Series 4 card. If you're missing this one from your collection, it is not only a tech card now against things like Thanos and Arishin that have bigger decks to start, but it's also a key build-around piece in a number of meta decks and brews that I've worked on over its time in Marvel Snap, and is a welcome addition to any collection. Thanks for making it all the way through to the end of the roundup. If you enjoyed my breakdown on which spotlight caches you should be saving your keys for, be sure to snap that like button and make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any future videos like this one, as well as best decks roundups that I do here every week. As always, thanks for watching and happy snapping.